Hello everyone, my name's Oliver Reese and I'm here to review Next Station London. This is a brand new flip and write style game from Blue Orange Games. And let's see how it plays and then I'll give you my thoughts afterwards. So this is how the map sheet looks. Every single map sheet is the same. You've got this nice pad. And most importantly, you get to name your sort of station here and you'll be given one of these pencils. So for instance, if you were given the blue pencil, you'd be starting at the blue station. You can work out the other colors, go with the other colors. Let's start with the purple pencil, however. Played out over four rounds, the game is going to be played in turns. We're gonna be flipping cards over from this deck and everyone using the same card. Now, most of these show a different a single different symbol and there's four of them. There are however these wild cards which show the four symbols, squares, triangles, pentagons and circles, which match up with the spaces on the stations on your map. So let's see how that would work out. So everyone around the table would be using the same one, so we'd flip this over and it would be a station that is a circle. Now I'm using the purple pencil, which means from the square, I can go on any along any of these dotted lines as far as I'd like to a circle. Now in this case, I don't have too much of an option. I can either come to here via this dotted line or across the Thames to here. Crossing the Thames would give me bonus points, but maybe I don't want to sort of block this route because in later rounds, I would not be able to cross that line there. It's not a huge one though, so I'd probably do that. And I've linked those two. The round is gonna go until five of these pink cards have been revealed. So revealing a blue just means it's extending the round a little bit. In this case, it's a second circle. Now I could go all the way across to here, but that is causing a long straight. I wouldn't then be able to, in future rounds, cross over at all. So I think I'll come down to here. You don't have to use one if you don't want to, but normally you're going to want to. This time it's been a square. Now I couldn't come across here because it has to extend either end of the line. So you could do maybe up to here. Now you may notice that there are a few special places on the board. Some have these sort of um, extra spikes around them, they are tourist destinations. When you link to them, you'll cross off the lowest number. At the end of the game, you're gonna get those as points. And this one here, this special one, is a question mark allowing you to use any symbol to go to it. So for instance, if I have this triangle, I could go to here, I could go to here, to here, or even down to here, which I will do. Because you are trying to link up as many of the 13 districts, You've got nine main ones and then four in the corners. There is one special card. When this is flipped, this would allow you to put a split into your route. So this would then allow me to do a split to a pentagon. So I could potentially draw from here to here, even though it's not on one of the ends. Now I wouldn't have to do that, but it gives me the option for that special card. Like I said, we continue until we've got five of these pink cards, but let's say this has been the end of the round. We would work out how many of the districts we've been to. One, two, three, four. We work out how many in a single area, or the maximum in a single area, which in this case is three in this central district. How many times have we crossed the river? In this case, just the once for two points. Then we times up and add to give ourselves our round score. The pencils are then rotated clockwise between players. This deck is reshuffled and then you go again. At the end of the game, you'll have played your four rounds, each with a different color. You can then add up your total and add it into this box. Then you will be seeing how many stations you managed to have two lines to connect to, three lines 
and then four lines for a lot of points. Now, in this case, I've not done too much of that. But as an example, this one here is a two, so is this one, and so is this one. So that would be three times of those for two times three points, six points, not getting much for the rest. For the places visited, I managed to visit this one on the green line, this one on the pink line, and none others. So I'd actually get the two points for that. Adding all that up, you would get your final points. These come in with special cards. There are two sort of micro expansions that you can throw into the mix. These are pencil powers. These are things such as you're allowed one time that round to treat something as a wild, whereas this one would allow you to do a split even if it didn't come up. Another expansion that can be used are objective cards, of which there are five included. These include stuff such as going to all 13 districts or crossing the Thames six times. And when you do that, you get the different amounts of points because two of them will be available. And well, that is how you play Next Station London. So there aren't too many components in the box, but I do like the way that they have been used. It's very easy to know how the cards, when the cards come out, what you're allowed to do, and also easy to see when the five pink cards have come out that that round is over. That's really nice and clear. Then you've got the four colored pencils. You know when you've got that colored pencil that that is the route that you're going to be drawing that round. And passing those round the table, that really, it, it sort of makes sense. And it's a very easy way to sort of distinguish which route you're going to be drawing that round. So the components, while not massive, they do quite a good job. Now, the thematics of this game really do shine through for, for such a simple idea. And that's because by the, well, maybe not necessarily at the start, where you've got this kind of abstract map with symbols on it and sort of a rough river. But by the end of the game, you actually have all of these different underground routes drawn out around the map. And it does look like a London underground style map. And it even makes sense for some of the scoring as well. Why are you, tr you know, you're trying to link up all of these stations. Why are you trying to link up stations on different sort of lines? Because that's actually slightly complicated and maybe sort of runs you into problems. Well, commuters will want to be able to get from one line to another to get around the city. Then there's extra points for going to the, um, the tourist locations, that all makes sense. You want your tourist locations to have train routes. So all of the scoring and everything makes sense. There is the added one thing about going under the Thames for points, just a little bonus points. It doesn't quite make thematic sense, but otherwise it does make quite a lot of sense. So when you're explaining the game and people can see it in front of them, kind of makes sense and it really does look like a London underground map by the end of the game. So thematically, for a flip and right game, I think it does actually really quite well. Uh, really a good job on that front. Now, it does have some problems, but slightly that is highlighted by one of its strengths. The gameplay is very fast paced. You are turning over a card sometimes two if it is the uh, split track card that comes up and then you're working out whether you want to draw that line from the current station you're at to the right symbol so if it's a triangle you can only look around and say i can only get to triangles that's really fast paced and it means everyone can make that decision relatively quickly and those decisions will come back to haunt you so that is a good thing because in a, in a way, you can screw yourself over by making a line cut through some of the map and then you can't cross it again later. So you've kind of made that problem for yourself. So it's an interesting choice of sometimes when not to draw a line as, as much as it is when to draw a line or where to draw the line to. So that's full of interesting choices. 
You haven't heard a negative yet. Well, it's partially the scoring. The scoring throughout the game makes a lot of sense, like I've said thematically. And actually, the different scoring methods kind of make you want to come back to the game. If they weren't all there, it might be a bit too simple. Still no negative. The rounds, what you're scoring up, that's quite simple. But at the end of the game, there is a really slow portion to it. And the reason this feels so bad, I believe, is that the rest of the game is very quite fast paced. You're doing simple scoring and then you get to the end of the game and you've got to go round your entire map working out how many of, your, of the stations on the map have two of your lines that go to them, three or four. It sounds like quite a small sort of thing but it really is quite a slow process going around your map trying to make sure you've not missed any. It's the sort of thing in a video game or an app on your phone. It would be done in sec or split seconds. You wouldn't know that it's doing it for you. It would give you the points and it would work really well. It's just a bit slow to do in person. And you kind of, you go over the map like two or three times because you don't want to screw yourself out of points at the end of the game. So, you know, you are going round and it helps if you start labelling them. That's still slowing the process down. Like I said, though, you kind of need the different scorings. The scorings for the routes during the round, the scoring for linking those routes up to stations at the end of the game and the scoring that you get from just visiting the tourist locations. Because without them, there wouldn't be enough to come back to. And this is a game that you'd want to come back to, despite that slow scoring. And I think actually when you do start to come back to the game and do those repeat plays, actually that becomes quicker. So just don't let that sort of first play, that last scoring slog, put you off really, because it can be a very fun experience. Included in the box that I did show a little bit in the overview are those two small sort of micro mini expansions. I don't think the game's going to get any more and it kind of made me enjoy the game more and make me want a little bit more from it at the same time. The pencil powers one where each pencil gets a special power. That's quite a nice touch, um, although it does maybe make some luck, extra luck into it. Yes, there's a deck of cards, so there's already luck in the game, and it could just mean that that one player gets the perfect power to use that round, and then it's not as useful situationally for everyone else. I don't think it's a huge problem, because like I say, there's already luck in the game from what's coming out of the deck, but everyone's using the same flip of the deck. The other one, the public objectives, I think that is a really nice touch because it drags you away from what you really want to do. Such as trying to go to all 13 of the districts. You do not want to do that 9 times out of 10 because you want to sort of blob up in one district and then hit a few others to times those numbers together for big points. Trying to go to all 13 also then creates this massive sort of spider web or almost or continued web string around the board and it means that you are sort of almost certainly shooting yourself in the foot for later on in the game but you've banked those 10 points for the objective so it, it's a nice sort of distraction away from the other ways to score points the reason that it makes me want more is there's only a few of these cards in the box there's only uh, four of the pencil powers, and I think there's like five or six of those um, special objectives. I just like a few more just to add that extra variety because once you've played a few times, you're going to want at least to use those objectives every time, and just one or two more, you'd get that extra variety when you're shuffling them up. But it's sort of one of these that the problem where it's like it's a great inclusion in this game, it means you're not going to get as bored of it as quickly, it's going to keep that freshness and keep you coming back for more, and then you realise, but I want even more of that. Overall though, Next Station London I have really enjoyed, I'll be giving it a 7.5 out of 10, and that is with that scoring problem just slightly bringing that down, because it's a fast paced flip and right, I think it 
does capture the look of a London Underground sort of map quite well. Maybe that's giving me a slight bias and bumping the score slightly, potentially. But I do, I do like it. I think it's one of those ones that's easy to teach. You could, as long as you do some of the scoring, play it with families and such. And I think a lot of people will enjoy this one. Make sure you check out other reviews on the Dice Tower. And until next time, I'm Oliver East, signing out. <laughs>